okay y'all we got another video here um this was yesterday uh we got this news clip came out uh parents the parents of missing teenager from logansport uh daniel and christine christian mirror face federal uh felony charges of obstruction of justice um it's gonna be a very this this <laughs> There's some statements here we're going to look at. Let me go and play the clip. Daniel and Kristen Muir face felony charges of obstruction to justice. Daniel is also charged with a misdemeanor count of domestic battery. And this is what happens, man, when you when you just when you don't repent, man, you just cause yourself so many more problems when you don't repent, man, you done did some foolishness, man, go and fess up to it. And face what you gotta face, man. You went overboard. You got too angry. You maybe, woo, maybe you was in a drunken rage. Whatever, whatever happened. If it happened, fess up to it, man. When you try to cover these things up and you try to cover up those sins, you know you end up, you know, multiplying them. You end up digging yourself deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Obstruction of justice. Why? Because you trying to cover something up. Any charges of obstruction to justice. Daniel is also charged with a misdemeanor count of domestic battery. After their inspection, the Department of Child Services says they found more disturbing details about the Muir home. Cody Fisher shares. They found more disturbing details of the mere home and what is the mere's home is their home the coal compound or is their home just one building on the compound like when it says his home what are they saying their findings Daniel and Kristen Muir walked into a Cass County courtroom in orange jumpsuits just hours after their home was raided by an Indiana State Police SWAT team. During that raid, ISP found their son, who had been missing for 18 days and the subject of a silver alert. Kristen Muir was tearful in the courtroom as the judge sternly denied the couple bond. According to court documents, Daniel Muir had a conversation with his brother-in-law about his son. During the recorded conversation, Muir said he whooped his son like a grown man because of allegations that the teen had inappropriate contact with other children. Let's, let's hear that again about his son. During the recorded conversation, Muir said he whooped his son like a grown man because of allegations that the teen had inappropriate contact with other children. Mm. Justin Muir was tearful in the courtroom as the judge sternly denied the couple bond. According to court documents, Daniel Muir had a conversation with his brother-in-law about his son. During the recorded conversation, had a conversation with his brother-in-law about his son during the recorded conversation during the recorded conversation this means the brother-in-law set him up if this this could mean two things this could mean a few things rather grandma called a brother I'm sure grandma called the police and grandma called that brother the next of kin, uh, his wife's brother. And the wife brother's calling like, hey man, what in the world is going on? Now to justify, to justify what is happening in the way uh, that child looks, um, he's explaining that the child has done something that uh, if we were back in the tour days, it would have gotten him, it would have got him destroyed. It would have got him put down, you know, for, for just to keep things PG, dealing with a child. And then I think about, well, what, what things in the text would get a child, would get someone put down? Well, that Deuteronomy 22, if you force yourself uh, with a woman and that woman cries out, 
um, then um, that individual could be subject to death. Now, we don't know if this is true. And why I say that is that this could have been a cover-up story that he's lying to the to the brother-in-law. He could be lying to the brother-in-law um, to cover up him just, you know, taking things overboard. Maybe in from a drunken rage. Maybe like who knows? Um, what could have? What except them? They know um, what actually happened. And this could be a cover up for that, uh, which still gets you in deeper trouble because now you're on a recording saying that. And I'd rather that be true. That's why I'm saying that first. I pray that's the case rather than the other option that you are telling the truth and that the son who some have told us that is autistic we don't know what level of spectrum he's on has um abused another child or or other children and therefore there are other victims besides the child that the father abused there are other victims here and there are other families of that victim that are mourning what has happened to their child. And they don't know. And if that is the case, and he was telling the truth on that cell phone call that was recorded, that was, pro and that was probably not, um, that probably shouldn't have been heard by the, 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 um, the other members if that is the case that family is mourning and they want some sort of justice but how, like how do you just continue to to live on that community and that has happened to your your daughter or your son um your child has been abused by another child um that you you can't protect your child. Your child is feeling like they can't be protected. There's so many things that I have to, so much counseling, there's so much, you know, so, so much help that's needed. Um, that you may have to send a counselor in and, and trust if this is the case and they're building some sort of case that they're, they're probably going to send, send some people in. They're going to have some people talking to some people and, um, Those lies better be straight. I don't know if them lies are going to be straight. I don't think you already couldn't keep the story straight. Y'all had different stories. Let me play the clip. Muir said he whooped his son like a grown man because of allegations that the teen had inappropriate contact with other children. Muir told his brother-in-law that if they lived in their religious homeland, that his son would be put to death for his acts. But since they live in the United States, they could not put him to death. On June 27th, Indiana State Police and the Department of Child Services met with the Muirs. During that meeting, Daniel and Kristen had different stories about how their missing son had a bruised eye. On the same day... They ain't even had their story straight. So they say. So if the parents can't get their story straight, how do you think the community going to have their story straight? How did, did, did they rehearse it? I doubt it. And this is why, you know, you know, people were saying, you know, and I was saying, man, this stuff a little deeper, man. And this is why I said in this particular clip, matter of fact, we're going to finish this and I'm going to play this clip that I, that I, that I did from a, another video I was doing on him. And, um, I told him about some of these problems about having all of these different kids around each other. Can't do that. You can't have these kids around each other, just kicking the bobo. Um, and they not like real sister and brother. 
you know and even then you have to watch them but you know if they real sister and brother grew up with each other you know um that stuff don't happen a lot of times but them step kids and bringing in these other kids and kids from other areas and y'all oh man we want them no y'all not you know, you have to really sit down and counsel those kids and tell those kids the repercussions of that and da 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 da. It's complicated. It's hard. It's difficult. And then you're telling kids to mortify their flesh. Especially coming into adolescence where they. Yeah. Man. Um, so we had a. I gotta say, man, keep all families in prayer, man. Uh, I pray this thing ain't no monstrous case, man. I I pray this thing don't get into no craziness. But um, that brother-in-law recorded that conversation and gave it to the police. Hmm. And like again, we don't know if that you know. If he might have told a lie to try to justify what he did to the brother-in-law. But it end up getting him in, in more trouble if that's the case. But if it's the true case and that is what happened, um, it still doesn't justify you to put your hands on that child like that. Um, and there's another victim or other victims uh, and families uh, that are suffering because of this, this, you know, just, you know, just left things unwatchful, you know, just a lack of, it could happen, man. You can't, that's why I'm telling people, that's why I've been making these videos saying you can't control these folks, man. And, you know, people try to say, well, would you, you can have the community. You don't have no dictator. You kind of need it. You have to control the sheep. You have to control the sheep. You see a sheep herder. He got his dog out there. That dog knows how to control the sheep. And sometimes you got to nip at the sheep. Sometimes you got to, but you got to stay watchful. Because one of them sheep will go astray and do something crazy. And that's all it takes. This, this this thing so fragile that all it takes is something like that, you know. Uh, and, you know, it's a crazy spin on this thing, man. It's a crazy spin on this thing where, you know, man, I can imagine if there is another victim here, how that family is trying to, they want to be mad but the kid has autism, but the, but their child has been like, ooh. And then you have to get be disgusted at the parents. You have to take that out on, on the parents. But then you got to watch it. Too. Man, it's crazy. Man, I can't even, you know, you can't even point the fingers, man. You just, you just don't want to be involved in nothing like this, man. And, and again, this can easily happen to any setup that's like that. All right. Hey, DCS did a home inspection and interviewed several of the Muir's children who told them that their parents disciplined They interviewed several of the children. Disciplined them by spanking them with belts and a garden hose. They also said their parents occasionally hit them in the mouth. And occasionally they hit them in the mouth. Mm. there has to be protocol put in place um uh, if if you're able to rebound from this it gotta be protocols put in place it has to be things in writing um <sighs> You have to restructure things. You know, I, you know, I, if I ever, if I ever start another school, um, that I, I would separate the men and women. Um, you ask any Israelite woman, 
Uh, she put that head wrap on and say shalom. Man, her inbox is so many thirsty. I think Israelites, I think Israelite men are more thirstier than 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 worldly men. I think they're more thirstier than worldly men. Um, and a lot of them come to certain organizations in order um, to satisfy their lust. Not to mortify them, but to satisfy them. And a lot of these organizations advertise that. That this is a place where you can satisfy your lust. You want a wife that's like da 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 da? Look at this. Look at the wives that we're producing. And they'll show these elaborate weddings and jokers like sign and sisters are the like, sign me. I Man, we gotta go there. I need to find me a, a righteous husband. And they divorce rate is is higher than the world. I ain't gonna tell you that. According to Indiana State Police, the Muir family agreed to come in for an interview on June 28th with their son. But an hour before the meeting, the family backed out. That then why agree? What's done is definitely I'm saying if you just would have just let it go, just go ahead and repent, turn yourself in. You wouldn't have got yourself in this deep hole like this, man. That's when law enforcement started the process of getting a search warrant. That you just could have went in there dealt with it you probably would have took you in uh maybe not took your put your wife in might have just took you in and your wife could have been at home you know doing whatever she need to do arranging things for you at the community um but you try to get away from this thing and i know one time i seen them doing something dealing with that sovereign citizen stuff man <sighs> be careful with that man be careful with that you know that's for people who ain't got really nothing else to lose and that's their last option you know you can play that you can gamble with that but it's a gamble that sovereign citizen stuff is a gamble uh let me show y'all this clip here that i um Let me make sure it's the right clip. Yeah. Um. Oh, man, it's all upside down. Hold on, y'all. One second, because I told y'all that these things be going on, but y'all didn't listen. Uh, anyway, um, I want to talk about 2 Samuel 13, 14. I'm just going to paraphrase the story. Y'all can go read it, but it's dealing with uh, some of David's sons. All right, we know David had multiple wives, um, but one of the problems with that comes the issue of Amon and Tamar. And what Amon... Tamar had, he, you know, Amon had a half sister called Tamar, named Tamar, and uh, he was he was so in love with her, so infatuated uh, with his half sister that it that he he couldn't do nothing. He was sick, he couldn't move around. He just he's just moping and just couldn't get right because of that infatuation he had for his half sister. And so eventually, you know, him and his cousin kind of devised the thing. Cousin asked, man, what's wrong with you? He was like, man, I'm just, ah, I can't, I can't do that. I can't, all I'm thinking about is, is, is Tamar. And so they come up with this plan to, um, to get Tamar to actually serve him. Uh, so he's going to play like he's sick. And he goes to, he goes to David and tells him, man, hey, you Dave, you know, dad, man, I'm sick, man. I'm feeling bad, man. Um, you know, let Tamar cook my favorite meal for me. Have her come in and cook my favorite meal. David didn't think nothing of it. And so he lets Tamar, you know, take care of her brother, her, you know, her half brother. Um, and this is what I'm what I'm saying. When you when you have, especially now the way we trying to do it, um, 
you have two separate families. A lot of times, brothers is coming in with families. You know, brothers is coming into this truth with two, three families. You know, all those, a lot of those brothers that are out there straightway, they have families and kids and they bring it into this thing. And then marrying somebody else or they're being given somebody else's wife who has kids. And then they're mingling them with their kids. And then you can have a situation with an Absalom and a, not an Absalom, but an Amon, a Amon in, um, in Tamar. Absalom is Tamar's brother also from the same mother, same father situation. And, um, you know, he's going to have a problem with what we finna hear that Amon did. So Amon went to the father. Father got him right with uh, Tamar, and Tamar is taking care of him, serving him. And when Amon gets the chance, he tells everyone, hey, man, you know, all the other servants, y'all get out. Just leave me here with my sister. And then he forces himself on uh, Tamar. And Tamar, while she's, you know, she's just saying to him, hey, man, don't do this. All you have to do is go talk to our father and he'll surely give you, give you, uh, give, give me to you. He'll surely marry us. Just go to my father. Just go to my father. Um, but again, you know, I gave you that example to tell people, Hey man, some of these ill, you know, some of the ills and problems with, uh, polygamy and joining multiple families, even, you know, being stepdad and, you know, you coming in, you bringing your kids and their kids, man, you got to separate them kids, man. You got to separate them kids, man. You can't put them kids in the same room, put them kids in the same house and all that, man. You can't, yeah, you got to separate them kids, man. And um, we got to use wisdom with that uh, when you're trying to, that's why you, that's why we're not supposed to be doing, we're not supposed to be living that kind of life, you know, we're not, we're not supposed to be marrying and remarrying and doing all of that, like, <clears throat> and this is why we're, it's sin, <laughs> it's sin, man, all of these things come down to sin, and uh y'all stay tuned we gotta just stay tuned to see how this thing play out um i pray this thing was edifying again i tried to give you warning on that y'all gonna still live how y'all want to live you still think you can figure it out um but you trying to you trying to tell a child to mortify his flesh that's dangerous it's dangerous it's dangerous it's like an infant you can't tell an infant to mortify an infant's flesh Infant ain't nothing but a ball of flesh. It want what it want. It's going to, you know, and when it want it, it's going to scream and say, I want it. It doesn't care about what you got going on. And if you see that you want something, you want that. You know, it's just a ball of flesh operating off of emotion. And that's, you know, that's what adulthood, coming into adulthood you know, you have to grow to understand that, you know, you have to be trained to understand that you have to mortify those feelings. You have to mortify those things. You have to be, you have to uh, learn self-control in discipline. Um, but again, when you have children that are autistic and you have them living in certain um uh, certain community type situations like that um you might be asking for trouble and this is why the parents are going to be blamed you know period the parents are to blame even if you know there are victims on the other side uh the parents the parents are to blame you can't you can't come at the child if the child's autistic you can't come at the child you got to deal with the parents on that. You got to deal with the parents on that. And man, if that's going on, man, imagine if the, the, the forgiveness. Imagine how many lessons on forgiveness that you're going to have to preach 
at that what's that straightway indiana goshen Woo. Woo. you need to start that now that need to be the sermon now that pastor now you need to be lining up them videos on forgiveness that's 70 70 times seven restoring a brother loving thy brother as thy son. man you need to get on that forgiveness man forgive those that trespass against us as we forgive those forgive us our sins as we forgive those that trespass against us man you need to be teaching the reciprocity of the kingdom the reciprocity of forgiveness because for that community to go on and if that's happened over there um there has to be a high level of forgiveness uh that's there man i pray this thing was edifying uh y'all be blessed <sighs> we'll see you on the next one